Social movements and revolutionary struggles since 1969. Um, none of it funded by grants or um, supported by nonprofits. Just to get that clear. Um, what I want to do is give, basically talk about the kind of um, you know, bitter internal struggle that happens in movements. Just to put a little bit of context before we actually go into the meat of this thing. And then. I didn't come with a prepared agenda after that because I know that people are coming to the people from the different groups are coming with some very different ideas about what this meeting is for and what should and shouldn't be discussed and it's not for me to predetermine that but that's something that we get to decide and decide what we will try to accomplish and what we won't try to accomplish in this. Um, I want to start by saying that this year is the 200th anniversary of the death in battle of Tecumseh, of fighting the U.S. government. Um, Tecumseh was a real, a brilliant thinker about unity and about the different kinds of unity and accountability. So I hope that uh, God is certainly having our backs today. Um, the other thing that I want to bring into the room is awareness of the people um, who we are tasked with being the ancestors of. You know, that we have a role as the ancestors. And hopefully, someday our descendants will be thanking us for what we, in our time, accomplished. And there, yeah, oof, yeah. Their ability to do that will depend on us. So I just want to ground us in that seriousness and say and hope that whatever struggles we engage in are contributions to that task and not alternatives to it. Nice. Now, a lot of the issues that have sparked this um, tension that have to do with the nonprofit world versus other strategies, with democratic governance, with transparency and control of information, with who gets to determine the relationship between organizations. All of those things are really important, and it's not my place to weigh in on them. Um, for example, I went to the City Pages uh, blog, and I did not read the article, but I did read the comments. Um, and those comments probably deserve a collective uh, moment of shame. And the nastiness is really unworthy of people in struggle. That's my scope. Not all of them, but I just want to say there's ways in which we need to call each other out as comrades, even if bitterly opposed ones. Um, <clears throat> so it's my hope that you all will figure out, either with me or without me, of a way that the issues, those underlying issues, can really be aired in, um, in a manner that does honor to their seriousness. But it seems to me that the key is that there's a lot of toxins floating around that if we don't deal with the, to the sectarian toxins, those issues will never be able to be dealt with. And this has happened way too many times in history, it'd be nice to not go there. Each generation that comes into struggle has to figure out how to deal with conflict. In the 1960s and 70s, when the FBI wanted to create conflict between organizations, they would send their forged letters of provocation to the group that they determined had the least experienced activists, often the youngest ones, because they would be more likely to get triggered into a condition of rage and into being able to convince themselves that people in other movement groups were the real enemy. Okay. Anybody have any questions or feedback? No, I'm not done. Not done. Okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll My let bad. you go. My bad. <laughs> um, so undoubtedly, I'll skip over some of what I, I wrote here. And I get carried away. 
So, a number of points I just want to bring out. First of all, I agree with some of the people who have posted online and in um, emails and such that when it comes to the underlying political issues, there's nothing to negotiate, there's nothing to mediate. You don't negotiate your political vision. You don't mediate your strategic commitment, right? But that's, that doesn't mean that you don't get to call each other out on, on infractions of ethics or integrity. But that's a, whole, that's a different process, okay? Um, and it's one that I think would be really, really helpful for this movement to move toward. Um, but moving toward that, starting to move toward that means that people have to get tired of, knife, of the knife throwing. Thank you. Okay? And this is a tough moment because a lot of people feel, still feel that they haven't had their day in court yet. People want to be heard and uh, that's fair, that's, that's useful because those issues are real. I'm um, hoping that we don't try to use this as a rehearsal space for that because I don't think the time is right that we're at that, if, if the rhythm of, of the process has gotten there yet. I think we have to deal with some of the toxic issues of our relationships first. Um, but again, that's not for me to decide. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so a healthy model of dealing with that allows a full range of people who are involved to discuss the complex dilemmas as they're seen from, uh, by people on the various sides of the fence. Um, in sectarian mode, what I call prosecutor mind, um, there is no, the other side doesn't have any complex dilemmas because they're just evil. You know? And th in the United States, we're very susceptible to that. Once those neural pathways get, to, get set in that allows us to turn a switch and turn former friends into the enemy, that's going to get switched again and again. Um, that's not a good, this is really a school for conflict, for the wave of people who came in after Occupy Wall Street. So that's not a good um, switch to flick. It's the same switch that you see being manipulated when people got convinced that Nicaragua was going to invade the United States, and then Grenada, and then I Iraq, and now Iran. Okay, it's just, once you go there, it doesn't matter what the logic is, it's just easy to do. So the way we treat our former friends and colleagues today is a pretty good predictor of the way we'll be tr some of us will be treating our current friends in a few years. Okay, just, that's that's what this is about. Um, <clears throat> there are moments when the internal conflicts in the movement um, really do determine the course of history. They're really rare, and I can tell you with some assurance this ain't one of them. <laughs> that doesn't mean that there aren't important things at stake. Um, also, by no means is this the worst bitter intermovement sort of um, you know sectarian conflict that there's ever been. Not by a long shot. This this happens. This is part of what the the, the actual tensions around process versus versus action around um, nonprofit versus you know street fight whatever that is. Those are organic. Those are natural. Those always polarize. And different people take up those different goals. That's just going to happen. The vote can be dealt with in a constructive way, or in really, um, in really, um, really damaging ways. The uh, the Hatfields and McCoy principle. Once you get, once once there's blood, you stop even remembering what the original issue was. So what I want to you know give you a couple of pointers on is sectarianism, which is when we fight each other, which is basically an autoimmune system, an autoimmune disease, okay? That's when the, the body turns on itself and thinks that parts of, its, of the body itself are enemies. And we're not going to deal with the real issues unless we can get the, the cortisol, the adrenaline, and the testosterone under control. Um, I was a young activist in Chicago uh, doing support work for the Black Panther Party when they went through the, the split that ultimately destroyed them. And there are a number of things that really became clear to me from that process, that and accumulated experience since. One is that there were a lot of complex reasons for that split, even though it was framed as a very simple, cartoon-like conflict at the time. It really wasn't. And 
because prosecutor mind kicked in, anything that the other side did was thrown in as part of the, um, the accusations against them, whether it was really a bad thing or not, which meant that the politics got really confused. A lot of the membership ended up really confused about what was really going on and what was being said because people were being attacked for things that everybody did or that weren't a big deal. Um, and I can tell already some of that's been happening here, that some of the accusations going around will be obvious a few years from now that they were just distractions, and some of, the, some of them actually have to do with real substantive issues. Y'all can figure out which is which. Um, also, there was never a process to lead to closure in the, in the Panther split. And, um, someone in Venezuela saying that revolutionary men cry when they are in mourning. So anyway, those wounds are still open. And the confusion is still there. But that means not only are the wounds open, it means that that clarity has not been achieved about what was really at stake and what really wasn't at stake. And it's led to thinking. Um, I think I could use the small size. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, what you're dealing with here is nothing like on that scale, okay? But some of the same um, patterns, I think, are involved. Um, you know, including the the, the um, presence of prosecutor mind. Another common pattern. This is really important. Um, they, that when, this has to do with powerlessness, when we are having a hard time getting some blows into the enemy, we can't get Monsanto to its knees, we can't stop a war, we can't achieve what we're doing, we turn on each other. The times of the most sectarianism in the United States is times when movements are starting to wane. And all of a sudden we realize that, hey, you're the one who's, who's keeping us from achieving anything. And if, I, if Monsanto's board of directors is too far away to reach, you're within brick, within brick range, and I can sure get a reaction from you. Okay? So once again, it doesn't mean that the issues that get people riled up are not real issues, they're not worthy issues. But what turns them into civil wars is our own sense of powerlessness and helplessness. <coughs> and it sure is powerful if I can do something that's really going to show a brute. Okay? Might even be able to achieve victory over you. <clears throat> so one thing that happens is that when everybody's at all in fight or flight mode, there's no backing down. You can't. You, it's really hard to stand down from that. You've drawn lines in the sand. Everybody's looking at you. You said this ain't gonna happen, or this is my ultimatum, or this is my precondition. You know, and and that's pretty tough. And it's important that the people who are most enraged not be left to try to resolve this by themselves. And it's the people who are in the second circle around them, the third circle around them, who are often kind of passively giving them support to kind of pull them back a little bit. You know, it doesn't mean you're, you're surrendering on the issues of principle. It just means, hey, you've got to step down, you've got to cool it, you've got to breathe so that the issues can be dealt with. You know, and that's because if everyone sticks to all those ultimatums that I've seen online, give it up. I mean, if you put the if you put the pieces of the puzzle together, they don't fit. Not that way. That puzzle does not work. Nothing. Um, And actually, the pieces at the end of this are already spontaneously railed at you about at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, I guess the last thing I want to say, and this is something that, a um, couple things. First of all, figuring out a way to deal with the issues is doable, to deal with it in a principled way. 
in a way that you can look back later on and be proud of. Um, and that some of the things that have made the enemy seem so evil will be things that you're not going to change your mind about. Some of them, if we can tone, get away from all of the toxins, will actually become clear as being much more complex than they seemed. You know, and I've heard a lot of talk going around that isn't historically grounded. And I just want to say, it's something uh, um, I was doing a little bit of digging around the, um, the Chicago anarchists who were hanged for fighting for the eight-hour day. You know, everybody's revolutionary icons, they were fighting for reformist demands. <clears throat> but they saw that as something that was strategically useful at that time. And some did and some didn't. Some, you know, uh, I could go into that, but the way they dealt with division allowed them to go forward. Albert Parsons was running for elective office, for God's sake, as a liberal socialist. And when they, he started figuring out that they were cheating them out of elections, he got radicalized, but good thing these other guys hadn't been vilifying him and demonizing him before then because he was able to join them and become a leader of the anarchists. You know? You'll be surprised who is with you and who is against you in five years. I've been, many times over. Um, and the other thing that I want to say, it wasn't on my notes, but that a really good rule of the road is, especially when there's conflict, is to, and it leads to marvelous results, is to say, I'm going to act in this room as if my legacy, my political legacy as an activist will be judged by my comportment tonight. And it's amazing how much posturing falls by the wayside, how we get down to being real, okay? You know, and I, I say that because I have total faith in you all, in the, in the ability to do this, but we've got to be able to hold ourselves to higher standards than I saw on the City Pages blog, that's for sure. So what I want to do now, and this is the jazz improv part. I came in here knowing that there was a lot of tension about what is going to be talked about and who make sure everyone's needs get met. My hope is that we can decide on something manageable to do this evening, but that the things that get deferred, the things that we can't deal with tonight, we have some commitments about how we're going to make sure that they get dealt with and followed up. So that whoever doesn't get to stand in the prosecutor's table and, you know, um, point the finger and shout j'accuse, you're going to get your chance in a context that's more manageable. That's my hope, is the way we're going to do this. So what I'd like to do now is ask for, basically get from you all some of what you would like to see us actually do this in what's left of the evening. Um, and if there are any sort of organized groups that come, have come with a p concrete proposal, either for the agenda or for something they want to set before the group, uh, I want to hear that. That's, that's something to pay particular attention to. But I'd also like to hear from everybody. This isn't a time to get into the issues. This is really just an agenda setting time. I want to get a feel from the group of what the range is of what you're hoping to tackle. Yeah. About the cash flow. Oh. Let's, okay, for this, okay. since there's a lot of people here and I have to cover a lot of ground, let's just put our hands Malia, all would you want to be the caller to help Loki out? Would that be helpful? What? I'm, I'm just confused about the process. Okay. We're taking stack, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Kat was first. I raised my hand. And then um, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you can need someone to write stack for you. Hmm? You need two people to write stack. That's Millie and I are doing one. So cats first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cat one, B two, Liz three, Becky four. Anyone else? Nick? <clears throat> Start while you're taking. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ricardo, for coming and sharing your 
the history, um, it's unfortunate that I'm also seeing that painful history repeat itself. Um, with the people that I care about in this room. Um, and I'm here humbly. Uh, I don't I don't want this to turn into a blood battle as I'm sure no one else does figuratively. Uh, Brad with battle, whatever. Um, I would like to see us talk about the democratic process with which we we can use um, the tools that we have um, to share with each other. Um, that sounds silly, but the Facebook and the Twitter being that tool coming up with a, a democratic process in which case, in which we can manage these resources and share them. Um, I apologize that I can't be a part of that dialogue. I have to go back to work um, tomorrow. We have. A homeowner um, who's calling campaign and stuff. She's going to lose her house in the next month. Um, so I'm going to go get back on work with that. Um, so just be, be here with humility and not to have a fight. Um, and I trust all y'all to come up with a good resolution. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Dave. So yeah, uh, again, thank you, Ricardo, for coming. Um, you're very experienced. I, I respect you to the highest degree. I'm very glad that you're here. Um, basically, real short and sweet, uh, I would like to see a, a resolution that allows us to part ways in an amicable fashion. That is, we're able to accept the fact that certain things about how we operate and what we do can't be resolved. But we can still respect each other, and we can do that without having to throw knives at each other. Like Kat said, I don't want to see a bloodbath. I don't think, well, I think most people don't want to see that. Um, and so, yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down to common decency and respect and an understanding that, you know, it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be the worst thing in the world. We can handle this. We're all grown adults. Um, again, thank you, Ricardo, for coming. It was, it's fantastic to have you here um, working through this with us. And um, I'm going to keep it pretty short. I just would really like to talk about the censorship that's going on um, online and kind of um, get some general information out about what censorship is and how it's done on the Internet for folks that don't know um, about that. He's making notes. <clears throat> Thank you again, Maturno, for coming. That was really, um, that was really great to hear. And I also am um, glad to be here. And I see a lot of people here that I have a lot of respect for, and who I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm, I'm glad that we are in the same space, um, under, although under somewhat um, circumstances. And um, I would like to discuss an idea for how we can resolve the social media uh, resources situation. So, um, I don't know if that's the right proposal. Um, Nick? Uh, just, again, thank you so much for being here. This has been a really difficult time, I think, for a lot of people. Um, and I really appreciate the vulnerability that you just modeled and that you grounded us really in, in the history of where, we, where we're standing right now. I'm uh, really thankful for that. And, and I guess going off of that, the vulnerability that you just modeled, I want to have the space somewhere on the agenda to offer an apology uh, to the group here today. Eric? Um, thank you. I reiterate, uh, and I think it was great to have Ricardo. What a wonderful, I don't know if you like the term community resource. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad you're, I'm glad you're amongst us. Um, and, and we have so many other great folks in this, uh, in this group. Um, I think a proposal, assuming that we end up with kind of two camps, and by the way, I haven't like, followed anything that's going on online. I'm not on Facebook, so I'm mostly out of touch. Um, but uh, it sounds to me like there are two uh, kind of camps, and I would just propose that uh, if it's possible that each camp send a representative to the other camp and like have a, a specific representative 
uh, things that the other group. Is that clear? Both yeah. of you are Okay. <laughs> so each each group send a representative to the other group. Yes. Do you mean we should have a breakout session? Like I'm just confused about how that would work. Let's stick with that first. Sorry. See. See. I'm gonna pass for now. Okay, Ty. I said a very similar proposal. I kind of want to put on the table to what Eric was raising. Was it seems to me that you know, in the interest of all Occupy Minnesota, Occupy Homes, there's other Occupy groups that rely on these social media resources like Duluth, Rochester, St. Paul, etc. That for everybody to move forward as a group, it's important to separate the kind of personal histories and personal tensions that seem to be wrapped up in this. I mean, there are political issues, absolutely. I acknowledge that. But a thought I had is if each group, if we basically ask respectfully the people who have been at the center of this conflict, controlling the social media, to step aside, that each group elect people who don't have personal conflicts with one another, who are capable of playing an administrative role to administer the social media, and then to go through a mediated negotiation process to think through what is a protocol and to come up with a recommendation based on you know, the dialogue, et cetera. What is the protocol? How do we do this? Should there be any you know, censorship? Should there be any whatever? And to try and have a process that is led not by the main protagonists of the current process, but is led by elected other representatives who don't have that same person as you. I'd like to interject here in this fact. This is the proclamation process. Um, what you just said, I would translate for this for these purposes as, I want to talk about the resolving the media, control of the media issue. Because um, this, is this is finding, make, place, place markers for the agenda. And then um, if the group agrees, then we can talk about this. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, can you repeat what you said? Yeah, that's all, what we're doing now at this moment, we're just spending a little time setting an agenda. So, things that you feel like we really want to talk about, or if you, or we can you know, get the consensus once we have some suggestions up there. So let's see how many more people we have that have proposals to resolve tonight or to talk about. Okay, uh, Mary Lynn. I, I guess it's pretty much process. Um, go ahead. Um, I feel like Dee actually made a contribution towards setting an agenda and it didn't get written down. I didn't know that. As he said that he wanted an outcome. Which he wanted to resolve the, it. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't. The two I wasn't. Groups would be separate, but we'd find a way to get along. I think that's what we're doing in the process right, right. now. Yeah, but I'm just saying, it sounds to me like that ought to be a, uh, an agenda. There's a huge, there's, this, this, is, this is a huge discussion, and right now we just need people on the staff to just, I don't mean to be rude, but, um, so Mary Lynn? Uh, yeah, I think my point is that I would like to reiterate what I feel is a sense of immediacy around solving this uh, media issue. We've got a homeowner here who's got a, a campaign that's depending on this, so I am feeling some immediacy, uh, urgency about uh, talking about that, that issue and solving it. And well? Uh, um, I think there's several people here who probably share the longevity of Ricardo and I might have, but certainly I can uh, resonate a lot with what Ricardo had to say about uh, the history that he has involved in, because I went through that same history from other geographic places. Saw the, uh, certainly saw the, um, the work of what happened with the Black Panther Party, uh, with the civilians of the Russian army, with Russell Lee, and its demise because of uh, police uh, and, uh, informants and, and uh, investigation and, and, uh, and interference. 
uh, as well as uh, the broad struggles that took place in uh, the FBI doing everything it could to try to uh, uh, undermine uh, radical movement. So uh, I certainly um, can resonate a lot with that. Uh, however, I'm, 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 I, I want to end. I want to say one really important thing here for us to think about, and I wonder whether what everybody's been saying so far really can be under the aegis of Minnesota nice. Um, <laughs> and, um, and in the sense that everybody wants to uh, get along and go along, and often being, a, being a, an educator involved in a lot of political activities around education, this seems very, very familiar to me. Uh, Nobody wants to talk about what actually is going on. It is something that is very real. And I'm actually not afraid, I don't think any of you should be afraid, of the political debate and discussion that we must have in order to do this. I actually think it's very healthy for us to have this. Whatever reasons that it took place, uh, I think it's important. There's a reason why so many people are here, and the reason why that is is because everybody is very engaged and an issue that's got to do with the fundamental aspect of Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, which is democracy, which has got to do with how we interact with each other. Uh, at the end of the day, whatever it is that we decide to do, I would hope that we end up walking out the door, not maybe physically, but certainly metaphorically, hand in hand. I actually disagree with you that we should uh, find a way amicably to separate. I think we should find a way amicably to amicably to unite and to maintain the goodwill that we have, irrespective of whether or not we have huge disagreements uh, on various different political um, and organizational issues. So I would hope that that would be the real issue that we address and not try to uh, shove it under the rug because we're afraid to have a conflict. And frankly, I think that some people are talking about this in a way that is basically saying we're afraid to have a conflict. Let's have a conflict. Let's debate it. Let's talk, and talk it out. But then let's put together something that will help us to be able to continue forward. Are we getting to the end of agenda items? Um, we have a few other people. back. Interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, um, hi, thanks for what you had to say, Ricardo. I really appreciated it a lot. It was very interesting. Um, many of the things that you brought up, um, I also heard Roberta Alexander speak about while I was in California. She was involved in the Black Panther movement, and um, so it's nice to hear what you had to say and be able to compare those things. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, I hope. It's my hope that what we come away from this meeting with is a deep respect for the decisions that were made, uh, difficult decisions that were made by our media team to come out on the side of uh, right, and, and I do believe it is the side of right, to uh, step up against censorship. And I think that that's what the issue is uh, here. I'm not sure that, for me at least, it's an issue of them versus us, uh, us against them, although there is that, and certainly I've participated, and I think everybody has uh, said slights one way or the other, but really what, uh, what I see is that uh, a group of individuals made a decision to place a high degree of importance the underpinning of democracy and what the Occupy Wall Street movement is about and they did not arrive at that decision lightly or quickly but over a long period of time and I believe in a level-headed and intelligent manner and I believe that they acted appropriately given the history of what has happened in this movement since it began. And I hope that everyone will respect what they have done and how they did it. And I want to say for one that I'm not on their side. I'm on the side of free press, and I have been for a very long time. Thanks, John. Um, Doug? Um, I would like to see a space um, 
on the agenda for the media team to discuss the nuts and bolts of how Facebook and Twitter works and how contacts can be shared and such. I've had conversations with some of them and uh, based on my own knowledge coupled with theirs, it's my understanding that we can achieve the technical goals of sharing a lot of things without returning uh, the access that was removed previously, um, which obviously is a different end point than some people are looking for. Um, but specifically, I'd like to, you know, hear media present on exactly how it all works, because I think there's a lot of folks in the room who don't know immense amount of how it works. And I'm certainly no expert either. Thanks, Susie? Well, I guess I have someone that I would like to understand better, and um, because it can get pretty confusing. And also, it doesn't seem to me, but maybe I'm just being naive, that there's two camps here, like the two warning <laughs> and I hope that it isn't like that, although there's some definite disagreements. Okay, so um, I wanted to say, um, like to, to Nick's point that, he, that that you brought up earlier, you know, like, like I think it would be a, a good idea to have a time for for if anybody who wants to apologize for for things that have been said online over the past like week, uh, you know, and just come up, you know, come up and say, sorry, as as you pointed out, that there's there's a lot of heated heated rhetoric that I don't agree with even being said that's been said. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and, and I'll, I'll just leave there for that. Okay, thanks, Ruby. Um, Ben? Yeah, so following up on Susie's comments, I, I'd like to propose, there are a lot of us sort of on the periphery of this whole thing that really don't know all the details of it and of what's going on, and whether we ever find out what they are or not may not be important. But I'd like to propose that we can show our support to both sides because I think when we have heard everything we need to hear, or if we never do, we're going to remain supportive. There are a lot of people that appear to be maybe on one side or the other, um, but I don't see this as a separation. I see this as an opportunity. The movement is getting you know slightly compartmentalized, and maybe that's anti-democratic in a sense, but it's also, as somebody said last week, an opportunity for the movement to grow. So um, the proposal basically for those of us who are sort of outside and don't know all the details to, to show, show that we are, will be, continue to be supportive. And I'm sure we'll be empathetic to both sides' uh, arguments or positions. Personally, hate political correctness uh, because I'd rather know where I stand with somebody. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm a white woman, an old white woman, so like I probably don't get hassled as much as a lot of people do. But I did. I 
I was the, one of the only atheists in my workplace, and I made sure that people knew, knew about it. So I, I, I kind of know what it is to be, <laughs> you know, hated. Okay. We need to learn to, to <coughs> take a step away and deal dispassionately with with our internal problems and to respect people and, you know, for the help of so. um, Thanks, Jim. Uh, we actually just had a new that came in. you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Cal. Okay. Um, just heard uh, about what was going on. You want to check it out? Very cool. Um, welcome. Thank you. Uh, right now we're just doing a discussion thing, what we're going to talk about. Um, Deb? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're like looking at Fox. I'm just There's a few of us. Yeah. Um, okay, I just want to say that um, I, I, I guess I've been part of Occupy. I haven't been around for a long time, but I've been reading things, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not sure if this is just about the media thing. Because I, I also want to point out that there's been you know, that a number of other sort of long standing things that are going on that I think are in some of the underpinnings of whatever the latest big thing is. It's not the first time that someone in the media I mean, took charge and took it away from us. Um, but I mean, I think there's other things. I think there's different styles of the way uh, Occupy Homes has been functioning in comparison to Occupy Homes. So uh, even though like we're all together, because we all participate in that place, there's just some basic things that are going on that I think touched the heart deeply of people that have invested a lot of time and energy in sweat and toil for the greater good. So anyway, I just want to put that out there that I think there's more than just the media that has to be resolved. I don't know if this is on that, but I just think we've got to talk about that. the different styles and the whole convention thing and how some people didn't get to participate that wanted to participate, whatever that thing was last because you wasn't coming You know what I mean? I mean, there's some basic things. Can you speak up just a little bit? There's some people that can't hear. I can't possibly repeat what I said. <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying. Let her speak. Anyway, I'm just saying there's more than just the media at heart here. So. I'm sure some of us could identify what those things are, but now it's not the hot time. Thanks, Dad. Thanks. Um, thank you. I don't know the chance to talk with you first time, but I just wanted to thank you for your recognition of the concept and today. And what does that mean globally in this room? I mean, part of historical trauma that we're talking about here, how it manifests itself to each and every one of us, okay? And historical trauma in this country plays a great deal in how it's acted out in each and every one of us individually. You know, power grabbing, egos, you know, feeding the ego, you know, using this movement to get your ego needs met. You know, when you're, and we're all at different ages and stages of this movement, each and every one of us. And that plays a role into it as well. Some of us have been in the, in the struggle for 40 years, 50 years. I'm not going to tell you how yeah, many years I've been, <laughs> I've been around. I've been around. The point that I'm trying to make here is that each and every one of us carry a history into this process. And every time we deny our own development and how to improve who we are as people and not own who we are, and that's good and bad, we are going to be a detriment to the whole group. Until we can get down and dirty and be honest with ourselves <laughs> about who we really are as a human being in this process, because that plays into what Deb says. It plays into what everybody is saying here. We have to be responsible with our own shit and what we've done to one another and to ourselves in that process. How we get to that place of ownership 
and historical trauma and how it's played out individually and what we do to one another has to be addressed because none of this is going to be healed quickly. It's not. Because this has been going on a long time. It may be the media now, but it was other issues before. It was about racism before. It was about isolation before. It was about this issue before. It was about money before. It was about people taking this and people taking that. This is just one small part of what really has gone on in this movement. And if we're really going to get down and dirty and honest about what's going on, then we each, ought, each and every one of us have to be personally responsible for our role and our putting our fun in a fucking dysfunctional family here. Because yeah. we all have participated in that dysfunction, each and every one of us at some level or another. And we have to be honest about it and own it. And how are we individually going to change it? If we got fucking problems, we need to deal with our problems individually. Because if not, we're going to bring it to the table and make you all victims of our shit. <clears throat> so the historical, historical trauma and victimization and ownership. Thanks, Patty. Um, Lion? Yeah. I think oftentimes in groups I have seen a lot of anger because people are going on a false premise as to what <coughs> reality really is. And I think <coughs> today that it's important for us all to realize that Occupy Minneapolis slash Minnesota <coughs> and Occupy Homes are two separate groups within the large movement whose goal it is to take down the 1%, to take back our planet, and we all have common goals, but if we're going to go into this thinking that we're one group, and how can we put a little band-aid on so we can all sing Kumbaya, that ain't going to happen. We are two separate groups. I meant it for everybody, you know? We support each other, but we are two separate different ways of doing things, different takes on this, that, and the other thing. There is no right and wrong. We just need to recognize what the facts are and get on with it and support each other. Maria, do you have me in the stack? Chuck, put him on. Line, are you, sorry, I didn't yes, know. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Um, Chuck, the other Chuck. <coughs> oh, he was before me. No, but he. Yeah, he skipped. Yeah, oh, he skipped retracted. So, yeah, Chuck. Lots of Ninja Chuck. I don't know after listening to the other things that you said, but I want to say I found in the other organizations too that. One of the most essential things that occurs is the issue of ownership. This is our committee. You can't do anything. Keep you out. It's ours. And I think that it's just a kind of an inherent tendency for people, you know, there's the old guard, and this, and then the new people, and, and somehow that's discouraging. I mean, I've been told that I wanted to put the church down because I wanted to support the Minnesota Health because I wasn't in the committee. Okay, you're bad. You can't write to anybody. You want to see your emails and approve them before you do that. And I, I sense there's that's a very human tendency, so I could almost bet it's part of this. Now, the other thing is, uh, especially in Western culture, we have this tendency toward dualistic thinking. I'm right, you're wrong. Zeros and ones. All right? Rather than the notion that you, you break across those zeros and ones, and you're all part of the, the same thing in a way. You know, you'll find that in all kinds of spirituality, I happen to read Richard Rohr out of Compassion and Action. 
and really kind of categorize them in a way I'd like to suggest for uh, how they would fit into an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I want to first sort of riff a little off of something that Manuel said. And that's, uh, I want to say that the flip side of Minnesota nice is Minnesota nasty. <laughs> <laughs> um, that both, and that both Minnesota nice and Minnesota nasty are ways to avoid really engaging in substantive struggle. Mm -hmm. So that to say, you know, um, you know, that it's not a dichotomy between being really nice and avoid conflict or go into the personalized vicious sort of conflict. There's another way. We're not very good at it. And I think the fact that Minnesota nice is so prevalent means that it flips very easily when, when you put pressure on it into Minnesota nasty. But they're both, well, they're both rather evasive. So. Um, we need to figure out another way. Uh, so there's really three categories, three main categories that everything fell into. Um, one is um, about media, sharing media tools, explaining media tools, figuring out media tools. Um, another is censorship. How does it work? How is it affecting? this whole dynamic. And three is apologies. We're going to leave an hour and a half for those. Um, an hour and a half. An hour and a half. And then a fourth thing which wasn't widely raised but was brought up is the issue of the all of the underlying political issues that are kind of the backdrop for this. Yeah. Um, and how we want to do, whether we deal all of that okay. now or whatever we need to work that out, maybe I can um, come up with a proposal in a few minutes. We can maybe spend another 10 minutes or, or 15 just airing, letting people throw into the hat what they're thinking that isn't necessarily an agenda proposal. And then I'll come up with a suggestion and see what y'all think. Yeah. Is that fair? Actually, I don't understand. Hmm? He doesn't understand. What are we doing right now? Nobody challenge. Okay. <laughs> 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 say whatever you want to say. 
without censorship. <coughs> what don't you understand about no censorship? Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna just gonna sort of propose a way to, to um, you know, run the rest of the agenda. You want to break the mill and, and discuss? Kind of like ten minutes, five minutes. What is the purpose? I don't, I don't get it. What's the purpose? I have questions. <laughs> I don't have any idea. Did you want to take a break? Do this thing. Come on. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, Chuck. We're trying to marry each other. Do you want to do this or do you want to do this? I just wonder if we have any kind of imagination of time thing here. Yeah. yeah. Are we thinking mm -hmm. two hours, one hour? <laughs> <laughs> I'm your humble servant. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know the time for like other announcements, too. I need to get from the group what the time frame is. Let's kind of the meetings usually go, what, 8 30 ish? 8 30. Yeah. 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 In nine ish, I think we can cover this. Eight thirty is is one hour. Maybe yeah. a, a little. Uh, there's, an, there's an event starting at eight thirty at Jessica's house. Okay. Hold on. Liz, I don't think we have time to take a break right now, and uh, I just propose that we continue on with the agenda and start. Mm -hmm. I guess I just uh, wish that that uh, Occupy Minneapolis and Minnesota would spell out their plans again. I think there's been some confusion about some things and uh, some possible uh, things that, that were incorrect. And then uh, we can go from there. I, I think we should get to the heart of the matter. The heart of the heart of why the Occupy Home is many Minnesota people uh, got their access taken away. The heart of why the access was taken away from the media group. Wait, what? You can't relate. Okay, how about we just start with the agenda, right? And just go with it. Um, the media tools. Well, I'll show you. Yeah. Um, my proposed agenda is um, that we begin, as all good beginnings, with apologies. Because um, that might inform the rest of the discussion. I hop around. Don't worry. Ain't no attention to hit the um, So, start with the apologies. Then move on to the media. And I'm thinking of that because, especially if some people are going to be leaving for an action at 
that has the most immediate practicality. Then we move into censorship, even though that's very tied to the media issue, because the censorship at this stage is a matter of defining the issues and getting opinions and uh, engaging on that. It's not a matter of any particular decisions or arrangements that have to be made. And then I suppose that we end by deciding what the follow-up is going to be. Where does it go from here so that the issues that are either not been dealt with or that have been so far unspoken will have their day in the sun? And we don't have to feel panicked that we're not dealing with it all right now. Does this, this sound okay to people? I mean, I, for personally, I, I didn't want to take it personally, but as far as this meeting is concerned, and who called this meeting, who would have planned the action the same night as a meeting of, of this importance? Why would, I mean, I mean, I mean, I understand that this action tonight is really important, but there was a meeting called. So who, I mean, I'm not, back to accountability. It's like when something is this important and we want to resolve something, why would you schedule another meeting the same night? I don't get that. Um, I would actually I mean, propose I just, that we not okay, follow up on that. Right. Um, there are a lot of different time. rhythms that things happen at, and I don't think we need to. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not sorry, I just think for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, I'll keep going. Uh, that's part of the sorry. Patty, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So, Nick, would you like to start this uh, section? Yeah. So, I just, yeah, I want to start by saying I, I, th I think it's not insignificant that when all this happened, there was such a, a large response. And I think there's been a lot of things bubbling under the surface for a long time. And I want to say, from the point of view, that I acknowledge that a lot of my actions, my actions. I'd say are one of the primary reasons that this conflict has happened, and I want to own that and take responsibility for that and say that it started on like the, the very planning stages of Occupy. From then on, I've been very, I've, I've been very difficult to work with. I've, I've tried to manipulate processes to get my way. I've insulted people. I've been angry. I've been impatient. And my ego has gotten in the way a lot, and I say that with all sincerity. And I understand that people, even even today, wouldn't wouldn't take this apology with total sincerity because of the ways that I've acted. And there's so much hurt still uh, as a result of that. So I want to say that I, I want to say that last summer was sort of the jumping off point for this most recent round of conflict, and I played a large role in pushing to limit the participation of the national convening. Um, I did so for reasons I thought were right at the time, but seeing seeing the fallout that that created and the rifts that that created within not just Occupy Homes, but within the broader Occupy movement and the broader Minneapolis community. Um, so I want to take responsibility for the role that I played in that. Um, the role that I played in social media, I've been involved in a lot of disputes throughout, throughout Occupy Minnesota's existence. Um, I've kicked people off of social media pages. I've censored comments. Um, I've done a lot of things that I helped set the rules for. Uh, a lot of the rules that I broke were rules that I helped set. Um, so, you know, I ask for, for forgiveness for all of that. I ask for patience and understanding that this work is really intense and really hard. Over the course of the last year and a half, my house was in danger of being foreclosed upon. My family and my mother has been struggling all year. <coughs> With that fight and the effect that that's had on my family has been, well, I think a lot, lar a lot larger than I've led on to folks because I try to be a strong person and I try to be a leader, um, and that's been difficult. Um, and I think that that stress has added to the ways that I've acted, um, and so I want to own that. Um, I think, I think for for all these reasons and more, I think it makes sense for me to not ask that access be restored to me for any, any Occupy and then social media from this point forward. I think I've broken so many rules that I, I don't deserve to have that privilege anymore. 
Um, I do want to ask that, that people in this room consider whether or not the, the issues that I've created from the ways that I've acted warrant um, that access being denied to, to other people within the organizations to run, run the campaigns that really rely on those tools. Um, so that's the question I want to leave, leave folks with, and I just want to say that, you know, regardless of what happens with, with the social media, although that is a critical, um, critical tool for us that, that does have a lot of importance, I think that this coming together is really significant for, for the two groups and for the broader community. And what Ricardo has done, I think, in framing this, you know, is, is immensely important for us to learn from these kind of conflicts of how do we deal with this kind of tension that's going to inevitably arise from this kind of work. Um, so I just want to leave it with that and hope that we can use this opportunity to come together and, and to work through some of, some of the trauma that I've been a big part of creating. At this point, I would like to um, suggest with a, a fair amount of weight a, a ground rule in this part of the process that we let each apology stand on its own and have room to breathe and people absorb and take that away with them. But this is not a time, I think, to either express forgiveness or skepticism or ask probing questions. We just let each person have their say and let it live. Others? Need to speak at this time? I'll, 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 I have a lot of things that I want to say, you know, I'm just going to do it all at once. Uh, but first, I'll let everybody else have a discussion, and then, then I'll take over. I mean, I can be pretty crazy on the Internet, but, you know, in real life, it takes me a long time to, uh, to get my thoughts in order and, you know, get over nervousness and such. And this is in regard to this part of the... Yeah. Okay, okay so we'll put you at last, too. Yeah, sure. Okay. Somewhere in there. Um, Dan? Yeah. <coughs> well... Uh, to be brief about it, um, I, uh, I am sorry that uh, uh, I've been complicit in a process where people have been mistreated um, and that uh, I felt that I could procrastinate or hope that by procrastination I'd be able to kind of get out of it. And uh, that was uh, replications of problems of classism, privilege, race, gender, height, etc. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I no, I felt really bad about that, and uh, I still do, but it's uh, I'm I think it's getting better. Thank you. Um, at, and like with with everybody here, it's I mean it's good to see everybody here, and and you know I've I've been part of the Occupy Media team in the past and kind of, I, I've kind of left most of the, the um, occupying to, to, to other people and just reported on it, you know, I've just, you know, done stream work and, and, and haven't really offered my, um, my, myself into the, into a lot of what goes on and um, I hope to change that. Thanks. Thanks, Toby. Um, anyone else? Don't give it a moment. Hmm? You're waiting for me? <laughs> no. Or anybody any, else? Anyone. Don't feel pressured to do it, man. Yeah, you don't have you know, to. I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, last week, uh, somebody on the um, on the live stream chat asked if uh, if I could uh, ride around on Dave Bicking's shoulders and make an impassioned speech. So uh, if he's around, uh, giddy up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've I've I have been against. Um, Occupy Homes' practices, not what they do, I think what they're doing is really good work, but I mean the things like censorship and just kind of having like secret meetings and not really, I mean, uh, not really like being open with, with people and transparent. Uh, so my, my problem, you know, I remember on the plaza, like, 
you know, having meetings that are across town and, uh, you know, not, I mean, a lot of people are sleeping on this plaza and they've been there for a month. They, it's not like they're getting up and going to work every day and have money to get in a cab or take a bus and, like, you know, there's no, like, ride share opportunities or anything that was happening. So, and, you know, and the location would change sporadically and it'd be all the way across town and, like, nobody knows what's going on. Uh, and so I just started, I was starting to feel real disenfranchised by, by Occupy Homes. And I wouldn't, wouldn't go to any of the events or anything and, you know, and speak out against it and whatnot. And uh, I appreciate Nick coming here and, and admitting uh, the kind of behaviors that he's been doing. You know, I am really, really at wit's end with all of this. I mean, and it, you know, it, it just feels like I was targeted specifically Well, other people who have been blocked from various social media sites are being completely ignored when they ask about it. So uh, do I apologize for, for the behavior over the last week? Um, you know, a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I don't feel like, like uh, um, my points that I was trying to make were, uh, were worth being uh, offended by or, um, or censored or whatnot, you know, it just seems like every, any voice of dissent gets taken out and removed and instead it's, well everything he posts is offensive, it's racist and sexist and, you know, I have screen captures of all of these points I was trying to make and, you know, your com comment has been reported and removed. So, and it's, I don't know, I just, uh, I don't know if I, if I feel an, apo uh, an apology is in order for that. Thank you. Thanks, again. No. In any case, whatever it is that said, it clearly doesn't you know, clean up all the past history or resolve or guarantee anything about the future. That's, that's another task. Okay. But it's important to see what can emerge when it's given a little bit of space in here to allow it to, to begin. Um, now, the next piece on the agenda was media. And this is something that has a lot of practical implications. There's really some long-term and short-term issues. For Occupy Homes, access to the media is a short-term need that's been blocked or not, depending on who they talk to. Um, and for the issues raised by the media committee, those are more long-term issues of political practice and, and, uh, and integrity. So this, you know, I think that the short-term one we should do is on the short-term, the long-term one, we should commit to a next step to make sure that that gets dealt with. Um, one thing that I do want to say, and this is just me speaking as an observer, not in any particular facilitation role, but given the different levels of technical knowledge, I question whether a teach-in on online tools is actually in order or relevant. Because also I think that we're dealing with a political issue as though it was a technical issue. Mm -hmm. um, I've been very influenced by the verb-based nature of Native American languages. And in verb-based, we're not talking about objects. We're not talking about um, a media list, a network, um, an outlet. We're talking about the process of reaching people with our message the flow of reaching people with a message, if we in the room agree that we want that to happen, it'll happen. And the people who know the technical side of it will, will be able to probably in five minutes figure out how to make that happen. So I propose that we not do that seminar, but really think about what is the social political choice that needs to be made that may be the key to stepping us back from a sense of fight and flight crisis mode into the beginning of a rep repairing, um, repairing and construction stage. So there's been a number of people who have stated or implied that they have you know, proposals on this matter. Can, um, can we see who those people are and start hearing them? At this time, will you raise your hand if you have a proposal to put on the table? Three? Did you have one? No. Okay. Manuel? Uh, 
I don't care whether you do this or not. Uh, I'm taking it from the uh, example of Occupy Atlanta, uh, who has had very similar kinds of experiences uh, with people making all kinds of different posts that, I, that people have real difficulty with. Some of them from people who are African American who do Atlanta uh, being totally racist, Occupy Atlanta being totally racist, and people who, who want to be libertarians and, and so on and so forth. So what OA decided to do was to, for specifically for Facebook and Twitter accounts, was to have a moderation committee, uh, a moderation group, a group of moderators, council, whatever. It was about, it's not very large, it's about four to five people, I believe. Uh, people that everybody trusts, everybody uh, can, can uh, rely on to, to, to uh, apply the principles that whatever the Occupy movement believes should be applied uh, to the online uh, and media space. And so I think it would be appropriate to try to, um, to propose having a similar kind of a moderation group, council, committee, and so on and so forth. I prefer that, I would prefer that it be like an even number to um, assure that whatever decisions are made about anybody, uh, any, any posting or, or process and so on and so forth is really, uh, is really directed to having to make real democratically based decisions that will, that most people, if not the vast majority, the consensus of that group will be. Uh, rather than trying to have a big group of 20 that are, I mean, just simply um, do that. So that's what I would propose, is to have a moderation group. So going back to what Eric had said, taking one person from one committee to another committee and sitting down in a group. Yeah, but I would say it would be good to have either four or six at the most. Like a panel discussion? No. no. He's, saying, he's just saying form a whole committee, like a moderation committee of like six individuals that will, that's, okay. you know, they're moder right. the moderators. Okay. I, I don't, I actually think it's way to have it smaller than bigger, but, you know, uh, it all depends on how people feel comfortable. Basically, uh, my proposal is that we have a moderations committee and people want to come up with a formulation for that. It shouldn't be a Supreme Court. <laughs> I just want to make the I just want to make the point that um, this group doesn't actually vote on proposals. Um, so if that was Manuel's intention, then I don't know if it was. Or not. But I wanted to make that clear that that's something that this group does not do. We were asked to come up with solutions, and I brought Sure. I mean, and I have no problem having a discussion about that. But I'm just saying for process. Um, Typically, we don't do that. We could make that exception, but that's. And as keeping is a part part of Occupy Movement, I would vote for us to make that exception. <laughs> okay. Um, side, Loki. You know, thank you. If I could just say, process goes. I would suggest that we hear the rest of the proposals, have a discussion, and see how close we are to move some kind of consensus. It may be that the people who do get to make those decisions will be in agreement with the. <laughs> My proposal or idea to throw out was actually pretty very similar to what Manuel already put forward, except I guess to add on a little bit. I think it my thought is is sort of a recognition of what at least a number of people said is that there are in reality sort of different organizations that have come out of the Occupy movement that you know maybe share a general umbrella, share a general history. Um, um, but we also have to recognize that we have uh, shared resources, um, a shared history, and we have to learn how to work together with those. That, that like the social media has been built through the collective efforts of not just Occupy Minneapolis and Occupy Homes, but also to a degree some of the other broader Occupy groups, St. Paul, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and so the proposal is yes, to have a sort of a, a, a committee or a moderation group that is composed of people elected, I don't different groups of different democratic processes that they work through, but that comes out of the different groups that, you know, we could say Occupy Homes has a couple. Occupy Minneapolis has a couple, maybe Occupy St. Paul is asked to, to have, have, I don't know what the, I'm not fully sure how these different groups are functioning or whatever, but that those groups come together and try to, and I would also propose, this is maybe more way of advice, 
that those people that are elected to that are not the people who've been at the center of this already, mainly to sort of bring, to kind of set aside the personal conflicts and to bring trusted people who maybe can represent the views, if not the histories, uh, into the room together and try and come up with a common framework for how these resources can be used that meets the, uh, you know, that is a compromise maybe, but that meets the sort of common criteria, um, brings those back to the group, respective groups, um, for their overall approval. Uh, so maybe that would be something that would not be voted on tonight, but that would be brought back to our respective groups. Occupy Homes meets on Saturday. This group, maybe uh, the Occupy Minneapolis, maybe could meet next Wednesday um, in a more normal meeting and, and make those decisions. Interjection. I think that a, a little ways down the stack, it would be it will be appropriate for us to ask the people currently running the media group whether they view with friendly eyes the discussion a discussion that would change the governance of that group. Um, right now, let's keep hearing the proposal. So maybe just to clarify, I put that forward more as an advice than as sort of part of the formal proposal. I but I think I'll just part of a number of these proposals implies that, and I think it's it's important to. <coughs> I just, These are all, yeah, Manuel, we'll just have a stack, please, thank you. Um, go ahead, Liz, if you had. What, was I in next? No, it's oh, no, 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 Becky. Um, I'll pass it off. Okay. Um, Bob. Uh, I would bring it for the past on Wednesday. Uh, I want to make a couple comments. Uh, it seems that the, the group <coughs> occupied uh, is a number of different groups right now. And I think you've got two different issues. One is, decision making and the real question there is to what extent does it have to be done with agreement on everybody uh, and second uh, how do networks work and how do ideas get spread and how do people get involved through networks one possible way of approaching this is to simply recognize that each committee or each group or each organization can have their own outlets and coordinate them and just put a section on the home page of everybody saying here's a list of different organizations we work with and links and maybe a one sentence news item as to what people are working on. Now that eliminates the requirement for trying to have you know, a, a group that's deciding and coordinating. Uh, so if, if this organization, and maybe I shouldn't use this word, if this coalition or a group of people that's working on different projects and sometimes everyone agrees and sometimes people don't agree. Uh, maybe the best way for uh, the overall progress of trying to uh, promote an agenda that really represents the 99%, I'm a Republican by the way, uh, you know, I'm a very strong supporter of Ron Paul and foreign policy. So you know, there are things that I'm interested in working with you on, but I'm not going to agree with everything. But my, my proposal would be this. Why don't we think about a structure where you can have multiple media outlets and you don't need to have, uh, in effect, censorship or, or editing. Uh, just let each organization uh, promote what it is doing and tell everybody else what they're doing. And you know, maybe, Nick, that would work for you and your organization. I, and I think the whole idea of dealing with foreclosures in homes, and I want to talk to you about this uh, you know, maybe tonight or later about this. Uh, I'm very interested in working with you on that issue. But maybe that's the way to approach it, not to try to have a, a group that's going to decide how to control a message, but to have a number of organizations with their own outlets and everybody just post one sentence news items on what everybody else is doing. Thanks, Bob. Um, Liz, you're up. I just wanted to make make it clear so people did know like the way what, what Ty was talking about, that already exists. Like, that's how our group already works. We have different people from different um, organizations that work together. We've been doing this for a long time and uh, kind of works that way already. The reason that we uh, put out our statement is because there's been two editorial processes. You know, like, there's an editorial process. That's the main thing that's dividing us, the editorial process. So I think that we need to talk about that propose we talk about that um, and how that um, how that's affecting like the decision of the people who signed the statement from Occupy and then. Uh, I got a lot of 
Thomas A. So none of it belongs in the proposal time. So my proposal is both groups go their separate ways. They're two separate organizations, and that's what I propose. Um, I can see the separation, but my question is, the real questions are, what about the list of people on the list, the list serve it's called? Mm -hmm. That's the big question as well as the philosophy. Those are the two. I mean, are we censoring or not censoring? Are we democratic or not democratic? Do we share the list or not share the list? Are we vertical or hierarchical? We'll share the list. We already have. The team stated that. Yeah. Ty? It's just to clarify one thing. The reason it, yeah, there's, there, in some ways you can go your separate ways, but there's, when you've built up this huge asset of 22,000, I think it is, contacts, um, you, that's not something to just easily replicate, or you can't just split that up. It's a, it's a you know, it's an achievement that is sitting there, and it's a question of how do you use those, who uses those resources, et cetera, and so you can't, Simply split that up. You have to either choose to share it or, or, or not. Um, no, wait, no, wait. Doug. Doug, sorry. Doug. Oh, um, you know, again, I think this is a, a question for Dan and others to answer. It's my understanding that there are plenty of scripts out there that. Resolve this. I know a little bit about Facebook Script Kitty stuff, but I haven't been a Script Kitty in a lot of years, so I'll be the really expert. Um, and uh, also, Trey wants me to suggest that we all make some pie and share it. April? Actually, off of what Doug said, kind of. Um, We've been talking about possibly just with the separation of the resources, there is a significant difference in followers. And it has a point when there's you know there's a good ten thousand difference at least on Facebook alone as far as like fans are concerned and stuff. So I mean something to ensure that like people have as many opportunities as possible to continue to build the Occupy Homes followings that might not be as large as Occupy and then it's, um, that we can plug the accounts and whatever scripts get back and forth. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know, of course. So if we do something to that effect, just, you know, in good faith to make sure that they're at least in the right place on their channels. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, Abel. Um, well, it seems that there's really two um, sort of possible paths emerging. One is some kind of collective governance of these um, assets, if you want to use the business term. Um, another is that some process of separating so that whatever it takes, and it's technically different in each of the media, that each group go away with the, their version of the base um, lists that exist now and then continue to build them on their own. Mm -hmm. Presumably, if is that um, presumably if um, you know the spirits smile upon us and there's friendly relationships, then the groups can continue to publicize each other's events on their own list. But that would take the tension away from the necessity be to be married. But I'm not advocating for that as opposed to the other. But I'm saying that seems to be a. a fork in the road where we'll have to make a major decision of which of those directions to go in. Oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not the one to call on you. Um, you're on the staff. did you have a comment to uh, I can just get set. <laughs> I just had a comment. Um, we're not just talking about Facebook and Twitter. We're also talking about um, the Google groups as well. We have to bring that into the conversation as well. Hmm? Yeah, I, I, I want to speak directly to the political question underneath this all. The political question is, do we want to stay united with one group that has multiple kinds of, of movements associated with them? 
or do we want to have a separation of fork in the road as, as Ricardo very, very clearly uh, described? Uh, and I, I opt for us, I, I believe it's a mistake for us to adopt what Bob proposes and what B basically fails into, which is essentially a separate but equal kind of process. I think that that is a really, really big mistake. I've seen that happen too many times in organizations, but we're not, we're not any different, we're not in real, any, any other organization. Occupy is a movement that has taken every other radical movement way beyond its, its history. And I think that it would be a huge mistake, it would, it would be a huge downturn, um, and actually um, uh, reify the, the or, or codify the, the, the real uh, schisms that I think the media and others will jump on. And, 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 and they will be correct to do so because they speak for the 1%, and they are very interested in having us be separated. Okay, well, on that note, uh, Okay, um, Gabriel, I guess what you said? Oh, uh, Well, when we're talking about sharing lists of people, um, you know, and sharing contacts and things, I, I have quite a bit of experience with this uh, over many years, and I would just like to emphasize that the people who originally uh, clicked like or became a member of a Google group that was Occupy MN were becoming requesting to be part of a of a specific thing, and I'm not sure that uh, they want to be shared out. I think perhaps they need the opportunity to make that choice themselves and that they be given that choice uh, very specifically uh, whether or not they want to be a part of something else rather than just having their uh, information hijacked, uh, so to speak, uh, and given out without their consent. It's a problem. So that's my two cents on that. Um, thanks, Gillette. Matthew? Yeah, I, I believe the biggest asset could wrong is the Facebook group. And uh, there's absolutely no way to split it up. Uh, people talk about scripts and stuff. Uh, you can't force other people to, to like Occupy Homes. And there's nothing you can do. Those 22,000 people are there and there only, and there's no easy way, I mean, no even complicated way to replicate that. So uh, uh, let's not be confused uh, about the te technicality part of it. That's there, and there's only one of them, and it cannot be replicated. Um, it seems that you know, we're, we're at a good moment here in terms of certain that, you know, the, the uh, sort of problem-solving spirit in the room. Um, there are also a lot of people who haven't spoken, and it's a difficult format. Um, but I think it's becoming clearer what is being talked about. I'm wondering if this might be a moment to just, you know, take five, eight minutes, turn, you know, into groups of five so that um, we can get more of this air, get everybody a chance to speak, and then come back and see what the what direction the sense of the group is moving in. Does this make sense to people? No. Um, and then Toby. Um, the committee that signed the papers, we have a really one. Um, I think, Mary, that's the next question. I think it's the point I want to address, the, the process by which this happened. Uh, this, you know, uh, movement last uh, Wednesday night, so I'm not sure when it's appropriate to get into it, but I, there are some points to be made about that, um, how it was, you know, proposed, how it came down. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say, the reason why we're here is because of lies and manipulations. People tried stopping this over a year and a half ago, but because people continuously lied and manipulated to other people, we are at the situation we are now. Facebook 
wouldn't even be an issue because Occupy Homes would continue to have its own Facebook a year and a half ago if they didn't continue to lie and manipulate to other people, which they have admitted to doing here in this room. And I cannot stand silent anymore. And that is the reason why we are all here. Over a year and a half ago almost, people tried stopping this situation. They tried stopping this. Occupy Homes agreed that if they were to take donations, if they were to start doing the things that they are doing, they would create their own accounts, they would make their own movement. I'm sorry that it comes down to this now, but like I said online, you reap the seeds you sow. That's the bottom line. If you can lie to people and you manipulate them, what happens? Um, the, uh, direct to your breaking up, um, uh, re with respect to Occupy Homes, um, they have... Uh, they, they have a, uh, a meeting at 8.30, and, and eating up uh, their time with that breakup, I think, would be counterproductive. Okay. I saw that as a way of accelerating the process. Can I just read it? Patty, Doug, Becky, Mary, Kathy, Lyon, and Jamie. Jamie. Okay, five after eight. So proposals, proposals are, are uh, welcome. I, I think that, you know, we, we all were on the cross of credit, all of us. We all, like, um, came together for this great purpose, for many different reasons. But one of the reasons why we really embraced it was because it was a leaders, leaderless movement, we didn't have leaders, we didn't have self-proclaimed leaders, and we didn't have money vested in the movement. That was everything that we were against. Everything that was down to the principle. Whether you're a nonprofit or not, you're still going to the United States government for money. You're still getting kickbacks. Yeah, you are. You are getting kickbacks from foundations that are supported by corporations that we're going against. Principally, I cannot agree with supporting Occupy Homes accruing money off the back of Occupy MN. It's okay, I totally support your movement, I totally get that, and I totally understand how important it is to save people's homes, but that's not what the Occupy movement was based on to begin with. It was based on principles. It was based on a set of principles. And Occupy Homes separated themselves from those principles. We are not going to be held accountable for your actions. You need to be accountable for your actions. We are still sitting in these rooms as a broad-based community, still doing the work without getting money from 501c3 foundations that are supported by banks. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, okay. me personally. Patricia, one voice. You're talking. I just want to say, I think it should be separate. I agree. Occupy Homes needs to go a separate way. Occupy Minnesota needs to stay as If you want to participate in Occupy MN, then come back to the table and be a part of us and participate in our process as another group. Um, here, yeah, we're at 10 after 8, and you know, Here's an example of underlying issues that need the light of day that can only be treated with justice in a forum where the complexity of the issues can actually be dealt with. It's not going to be a snapshot. It's not going to be an accusation defense that's not going to move us forward. I think it is an indication that we need to commit ourselves to the follow-up process to air these issues, both the ones that have been raised about the history of, you know, cutting off the Facebook, the ones that have been raised about some of the underlying political tensions around strategy, what are those complexities? But we have to be able to do justice to that. That does not prevent us from saying, in the interest of a rather vague liberal fairness, we will find ways to that all of us can meet our needs in the meantime. You know, the trial ain't happened yet. 
So the question before us now is what to do in the, you know, going forward so that we have a way, an understanding of how we're operating. Um, Nick has removed himself from, from consideration for having access to the list, has asked if somebody else from the organization can. There's been proposals to have some kind of a council moderation group. There's been proposals to um, basically separate the resources um, and we need to bring that into focus and we also can also, we have the option of saying, okay, this is a little too much to come to a consensus now, therefore, for the next several weeks we're going to say, okay, this is what we're going to do just to, you know, make sure that we can leave this room. That doesn't mean that we've committed ourselves to a permanent solution. And I completely agree with that. Seeing as that we are very low on time, and that I know everyone has their own opinion of what's going on right now, but um, again, this is a long process, as you said. Um, Dan proposed to explain the editorial process of it. Or what's if, been going on the last few days? Yes, yeah, what's been going on the last few days. You guys want to do a temperature check on that, if that's okay? So we don't keep on wasting time. I mean, I'm not saying that everyone's opinion is wasting time. It's just more of getting to the point. And what so, will, clarification, what will that accomplish in terms of what we're trying to do? It, it'll put people on the same, more, hopefully more informed discussion about what, how the stories have been handled since it changed on Wednesday mm -hmm. and, and how we've been trying to operate. The, because the, the editorial process is the, still the core, one of the core subjects here. So and are you just, proposing this as a model going forward? Uh, I, I'm just, I want to explain how it's working, um, in my opinion, how it's working. Um, and then I think that that could be instructive as a, a living example of what the deal is right now. So, is that okay? Do you want to take a temperature check? Briefly. Okay. Okay, br briefly, yeah. Okay. So. Uh -huh. Just also, what was the process that arrived at the decision to? Is this something that I was hoping that would be? I'm thinking that that's a, a okay. separate thing to that, get into. Separate. Yeah. It's, it's an issue I would like to speak to um, mm -hmm. to get there. Sure. And we'll have to see if we're going to get there tonight. So, um, after our letter was posted, um, yeah. Uh, Basically, people have been autonomously, people that are currently content creators on this Occupy Men Facebook page have been autonomously posting stories that are, that they, them, the person who makes the entry of the story signs it. And so um, I, I have, po I posted uh, the um, open letter to the media committee um, and, um, and I, I told people I was going to do that and then I did it. Um, OSHA ha has posted a few of uh, the, like I think the, the ongoing campaign, the, the McGee, I think, um, and the Brother Ali video. Um, so it's already Wednesday. There have been at least three posts about what is going on with Occupy Homes. And I don't actually think anybody was like approached to, to get those posted specifically. It was just we were watching what was posted by Occupy Homes and, we, and people in the group autonomously uh, posted those materials. Um, so that, that, that is what has been happening. And, and, then, and that's, I think, also been done in good faith in the sense that signatories to the letter, s several of them, are still completely banned from commenting on the o Occupy Homes Minnesota Facebook page. They're still banned. Uh, we can't get anything in writing about why they're banned, uh, but they're banned. But, in, in, but yet, nonetheless, be that as it may, posts have still been going out on like a regular basis this week. Um, so that, that's what's been going on. Okay. Autonomously editorial. Yeah. Okay, um,
that made the decision, and I'm wondering if there's enough folks in the room right now for a media committee to make said decision and if they feel comfortable making one tonight. We've already the talked about it. The second part of that is it sounds like there's a proposal on the table to talk about whether having someone else from Occupy Homes rather than Nick as someone with content creation hours and full rights um, and whether the media committee was prepared tonight to entertain such a proposal. Can you speak up? Let's see on the stream I haven't been hearing. Oh, sorry. Which particular part did today? How about we talk about like, that proposal? We have enough people from the media committee here, and are they willing to entertain the proposal of having someone else from home, or is this more of an ideological issue and not <coughs> specifically about Nick Espinosa? I can, uh, we've all talked about that, and um, it is an ideological, it's based on that. Um, we see two different editorial processes. Um, we've talked about what the principles of Occupy are. Uh, we have problems with um, stipends being paid to people from Occupy Homes and other issues as well. and like. There's no like negotiating on allowing Occupy Homes to be to have a content creator on Occupy MN, but we are willing to educate, <laughs> aggregate, aggregate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So um, this is not about Nick Espinosa. This is about Occupy Homes and the work that they do and how they go about doing it. And we are separating from that. Um, I guess there's a, just a couple of things that I think haven't been said yet that I want to make sure get raised. One is that the media committee of which I was a part of until this decision was made has a, agreed upon a consensus upon process for removing admins that there will be a public open meeting with the media committee and people will be notified before access is revoked. That process wasn't followed, so I don't think that was a legitimate decision. I think that a way to move forward would be to restore access not to me, but to somebody else from Occupy Homes until we can have the debate around the issues that are being raised around whether or not Occupy Homes deserves to be considered uh, an occupied group or not. Um, but Occupy MN is a statewide network of Occupy groups of which Occupy Homes self-identifies as a part of. Occupy Minneapolis could make its own Facebook pages as well. Uh, so it could Occupy St. Paul. But all these groups make up the Occupy MN network. And so I think a legitimate process would be to, in the, in the meantime, allow somebody else to sit on that so they can create content in case of an eviction defense especially because people can't have a firewall between them and posting content when the police are kicking down the door at 6 in the morning. So for people's safety, I think that needs to be taken into consideration, at least while this mediation is ongoing, to address the legitimate concerns that are being raised. Okay. Mary? I would, I would second that. All I need to say. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, want to point out that when, uh, when people mention that, uh, you know, bans, they're not just talking about being removed from the page in some cases. I mean, this is reporting it to Facebook itself and getting the account, you know, unable to make post anything. You can talk in uh, private messages, but you can't you can't even like somebody's comments or, or you know, do anything. And I think that's what needs to be pointed out and, and uh, specified that, um, just for the sake of clarity. Ricardo. Forgot that I had my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> um, there are a lot of issues and counter issues that are being raised, many of which have at least seeds of validity. Um, we can go back and follow those threads and try to unravel all of them. And I think we'll find some surprises along the way of how they're all knotted up in terms of process, what was, what was not legitimate. 
I think that in fact we're going to have to cut through those nuts and not retrace them all. Um, that means that we need something going forward. Um, the action of the media committee certainly got attention around the issues that concern them. Um, although it's not an action that actually has the effect that that uh, an action usually is intended to have when you do civil disobedience to block a train, it stops the, the armament train from moving. Um, in this case, um, it, this action does not force Occupy Homes to be more democratic or less censored. And it simply hurts the organizing work, the part that you support. So this is a very sort of muddy thing in terms of strategic thinking at the moment that needs to be clarified. I would suggest that the ways in which this is going to be clarified is going to take some time. It's not going to resolve all the grievances about censorship and Occupy Homes. It's not going to resolve a number of these things. But I think that we need to have a process where that can be dealt with in a little bit more carefully thought through process than we can do right now. But in the meantime, um, it's, it does not appear to me that blocking access is a necessary form of leverage to force that process forward. I believe that we can get a commitment from Occupy Homes to go forward with that process that people, and if I'm useful in, the, in this, I'd be willing to help, um, can you know, propose and set in motion. Um, whether somebody has, you know, uh, what I'm concerned about is that the technicality of whether oh, we'll post everything they say or somebody has access um, is starting to look a lot more like who is going to be alpha wolf and, and not back down. And the only, we're getting to that crucial moment in the process where the only way that the logjam is going to be broken is if somebody um, models large enough leadership that they're willing to let go of one of their or another of their ultimatums and lines in the sand. That's the only way to the door. I don't know who that, that's going to be. I think that it can be a temporary process until we can go in depth with this deep and important conflict. But my assessment is that that is what we're waiting for. <clears throat> okay, we got six people on staff, so we're going to do a minute. Yeah, Sparky had his hand up a long time ago. Um, I just have a direct response, you know, to what uh, what he was saying. Um, I really, it, I really, you know, don't feel that the issue, as I see it, is allowing Occupy Homes to have a position uh, of administration on these accounts um, because they have they have they have abused them the entire time that they have been on them since the inception of this movement and uh, they can't trust is built and earned over time and to be asked to be automatically let back on I think is uh, because of an apology is uh, just is, is unacceptable I don't think that anybody here has refused to uh, to post perhaps events have I you know or things that they have going on and um, that that what I see the media team wanting to do is to start a real editorial process where they try to uh, not overpost and spam if there's so much going on but at some point you have to process all of these requests that are coming in from many different groups and I think that everybody that's sitting on this media uh, committee can be trusted to prioritize those things and should be trusted um, they are consistently have consistently proven to be worthy uh, of doing so in an intelligent and fo informed way since the beginning of this movement. So um, I, I disagree, and I, I know that was a long response, but I think there is that's a big issue here, and uh, I just want to make sure that people understand that that they don't need to have administrative rights on that on these accounts. Uh, and they still would be uh, included in news announcements, <coughs> like anybody else and any other media would have to submit them and so on. 
Uh, Gillette, I guess I would respond that actually I don't know a lot of people on the media committee. Mary, we're going to stay on the side. I need to be reading. Oh, I thought I was talking about this. No, I was talking about waving my hand. Hi, Jamie. See you, Scotty, then Beth. There's been a lot of points raised tonight about sort of what is sort of the true, you know, politics of Occupy. And I would just encourage people to step back from that. I think it's a legitimate debate of what, how are we going to take this movement forward most effectively. But, I, you know, I've been active in building Occupy Homes. I was active in building the plaza at the same stage. Occupy Homes, just like Occupy Minneapolis, just like Occupy Minnesota is not a monolith. I've had plenty of conflicts <laughs> inside Occupy Homes. You know, Nick and I, for example, have disagreed and butted heads. I've disagreed with others. There's lots of debates about what is the way forward for this movement? What do we need? What is a democratic structure? How do we be effective? I think we need, those are legitimate debates to have, but I think it gets in the way of solving solutions when people say, you know, my definition of what is Occupy is the only legitimate definition, and, you know, we're going to just sort of run with that. We can discuss what, and, and that's an ongoing discussion. It won't be resolved, and nobody, <coughs> one person or, or group of people get to decide that. I mean, I've had disagreements with the way SEIU intervened in Occupy and took up that mantle and said, you know, Bush is, or Obama is the president or of the 99%. I disagreed with that, and I gave arguments. I also disagreed when, when under the name of Occupy, you know, what I consider hate speech against women, et cetera, was posted on, online, and that was said, well, that's part of non-censorship, that's part of Occupy. I also disagree with that. I'm not going to debate... You know, people can have their own definitions, and we can debate what's legitimate or not. But I think that is a separate question than under the rubric of Occupy MN, there are these important tools that have been co-created by everybody who's under this mantle, that have been built by everybody. And I think just because one group decides, well, the other group isn't the real deal, isn't the real thing, doesn't, they don't get it, I think that's not legitimate. And it's just one question I would pose to the media committee, or I pose to Occupy Minneapolis. Is, is the media committee accountable to anybody else? Is there a democratic pro I don't, and this is a genuine question because I don't know the pro structures in Occupy Minneapolis or whatever. Is there any, is there decisions, does that need to be, is that accountable to the wider Wednesday night meetings? Um, does anybody else get to decide or does the media committee autonomously just decide on its own uh, what to do? I just wanted to say, in regard to this list that you have, um, I'm a person who uses Google to approach things, so I just did the Occupy movement. I meant to go to Occupy Homes, but I mean, I ended up on Occupy Minneapolis, so... I question that this list was built only on Occupy Minneapolis. I think there's many people that were curious about different activities that they saw that may have gotten on your list, and I, I don't think it should be owned by just Occupy Minneapolis. That's just my, my basic thought on that. I, would, I guess a question, but I can just get on stack. See and I think we have the same problem we all had from the beginning, and that is lack of clarity about our decision-making structures. We uh, claim to be uh, making decisions by consensus, but it turned out that it was our, well, we, still, we still had a structure where we had leaders. They weren't uh, acknowledged to be leaders, but they still were. They still are. And so we have to, we have to, we have to get that decision. It doesn't mean to make decisions by itself. It's the finance can make decisions by itself. We're all the accountable to this larger group. Does this, does this group make decisions? Uh, and those kind of things in order to move forward. Okay. Um, Sparky. In debate, they, uh, they teach you right there that that's just to keep you off topic about what the real decision is. Yeah, the media team's held accountable for a lot of things. We have a democratic process. There was also a decision that was made, just like there was, there was a fail-safe put in these rules that were put in place were put in place because Nick Espinoza himself started censoring people and banning people. He helped create those rules because he was the problem. Now, as this continued to go on for over a year, what do people sat back and just let things go on? So yes, did we throw a quote-unquote coup? Yeah, sure, we threw a quote-unquote coup because we recognized 
the, what was going on, the lies and the manipulations. Like the stuff that, that you see and that you hear were lies and, and, and manipulate, like they would sabotage Occupy Minneapolis. We would throw an event, they would throw an event right on top of ours and bump our stuff off of Facebook. That is what Occupy Homes would do to us. Nick Espinosa has been quoted as saying, I don't care about Plaza, the Plaza's dead. As there's people down there sleeping on it. He, he came and took people off our plaza to go occupy homes and then victimized those same people and called them druggies and homeless. And I'm sorry, but th that is the reason why we're here. We're not here for account. We, okay, we could be held accountable for our actions, which we are doing in front of this larger group right now. We are being held accountable for our actions. And our actions, I, I've been saying this since day one, when we broke up into small groups to discuss winter survival, okay? When we came back, there was all sorts of different ideas thrown out. And then the idea of occupying homes was also thrown out. And then we were like, yeah, let's agree on that. Let's agree on discussing this further. And somebody stepped forward and said, we already have two homeowners that are going to be down here the next, was it a week later for the GA? How have they already had homeowners available? How do they already have homeowners that they were talking to? I'm telling you that GA, if we can go back to the live stream, which everything is live stream, this is a transparent movement. Our meetings aren't closed doors. You can come to our meetings. You don't have to donate $10. Yeah, if you want to donate $10 to our movement, well, we, we'll put it to fucking use, which will be accountable in our paperwork. I'm just saying, they, they came forward. How did they have those two people already ready? And they, they blew past everything else that was even an option on that. This was a, this, the media team threw a coup, Occupy Homes threw a coup from the beginning. And this is the truth, and I need to let everybody know that. They bumped our stuff off Facebook. They would take people from a plaza. They would tell people online that Occupy in Minneapolis did not have a plaza. When I was down there catching pneumonia, almost hospitalized, and they were going around telling people that it did not exist. It's a deep issue. We don't trust them. We have been lied to over and over again, and that is the issue. We cannot grant access to somebody we do not trust. There is a power behind that. There is a power behind the media, and they know that. And when they are lying to people, when they are knocking other events off on purpose, they know what they are doing. And it's self-serving. It's very self-serving. And I don't know if I can really continue being in this meeting because I'm passionate about this. And I'm sorry, Ricardo. I see your hand up. Sir, I respect you so much. But, sir, you need to understand, I sat down with Nick Espinosa on the plaza. And I told him what he was doing to people. And he laughed in my fucking face. He laughed at me. And that's all he fucking did. And I told everybody that I thought I could fucking trust what was going on. And they told me to sit back and relax. And that's what I've done for over a fucking year is sit back and relax and just let things unfold. And this is where I am now. My grandfather once told my father in preparing him for a life of struggle, he said, it would be really nice if everyone on our side was kind, principled, and clear-headed, and everybody on the other side were mean, grasping, opportunist, and manipulative. But it's not like that. And one of the things I teach when working with organizers is that betrayal is itself an organic part of our process. And there's ways we need to understand it, and there's ways we need to learn how to challenge it. Um, it is also not the end of the world once we understand that. And that however genuine betrayals are, grievance itself is what hurts us going forward. Um, I, I'm not here to pass judgment on the merits of any of these things. What I'm saying is that it can take a superhuman effort, but it's really a human effort because we can do it, that as a you are certain in, in your perceptions, as a collective community, that certainty is not there. Therefore, how do we, without dismissing the legitimacy, the possible legitimacy of your, your experience, how do we make arrangements that allow us to move forward. This is something that happens in the religious world. There are different conflicts. One is whose God is the real God, and the other one is how are we going to coexist in a world where we're never going to disagree about it. We never agree about that. Now I think that what I am proposing is that these issues that you are raising, there's some very deep issues and grievances and accusations going both ways, need a process. They need to be brought to the light of day. Of day, wounds don't heal unless the air affects them. The wounds of the Panthers never healed. There was never a process. 
movements are to be important for that, and simply taking unilateral actions, and this is not about therapy, this is not about catharsis, this is what is going to bring us forward collectively. Yeah. Right now you are stuck in a movement that also includes Nika Spinoza, also includes people who support him or support others. That, it's just like a family. You don't get to choose who's in your family. 20 years from now, many of us will be in the same movement. So, whatever it is, got to put that shit aside, no matter how good it is, no matter how dearly we, we need, we feel that it needs to be expressed. So all I'm saying is that right now, um, making a decision for a modus operandi, vivendi, a way of operating together in the, in the short term, is not a surrender on matters of principle. That agenda is still pending, it's parked. It's gonna, we're going to get to that. Yeah. But we cannot operate on the basis of one or another of the conflicting certainties in the room unless we've had a collective process. Not to dismiss any of them. So all I'm asking is what can we do? It, will the media committee guarantee that for the next three weeks or whatever, I don't know, that anything that is offered to them within the, the framework of movement building will be posted? Can they guarantee that they will be accessible to post those in a timely manner? I'm going to interject here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They have a statement that they would like to From, okay, well, uh, as a possibility here, uh, one of the people who's been involved in this decision, Tony Boycourt, uh, could not uh, be here tonight. And it's about five paragraphs, think, from him. Yeah. And I, I can read it pretty quickly. Um, and Tony, uh, has, uh, he was almost here tonight. Um, but uh, it, it says possible. If you'll temperature check, want to hear from like his explanation, because he was the person that originally registered basically all these accounts yeah. um, and has been a bottom liner on it from the very beginning. Um, so it, it, it could get like a temperature check if people want me to read Tony's brief statement. Yes or no, give me a temperature check. I, I would like to add though that, um, it, I mean it's fair that his voice be heard, <coughs> yeah. but I also think that um, the process now is not one on passing judgments on the merits of grievances. Yeah, sure. Um, also I got another message from Anita Reyes it didn't specifically pertain to the media process as to moving forward, but it did refer a lot to how she's been represented in the past. I just got that a couple minutes ago. She's four hours away. I think that's so. a piece for the, the follow-up process. That really is. Sure. Okay. So I'll just go with Tony's statement quickly then. Okay. To whom it may concern, uh, first, I would like to apologize that my presence is not possible this evening. I have certain familiar uh, obligations I've chosen to put first as a sentiment I hope most will understand. I've been somewhat passive in the Occupy movement for some time until being pulled back in head first as of late. This is why this statement is being prepared after all. Um, I know some might say Nick Espinosa, particularly the process which, in which his access was removed from Occupy MN Facebook page was done undemocratically. Uh, I firmly attest to this being untrue. The process by which he was removed from the page was done so in much the same way as been done in the past. The decision was made unanimously between Dan, April, D, Liz, Sam, Ardar, and myself. It's true that Nick wasn't informed until after the fact, and I agree that perhaps this uh, could have been handled in a more polite manner, but we moved forward in a way that we did because we believed there was a certain level of time sensitivity involved. There's nothing personal or vindictive about this separation. As the original creator of the Occupy MN Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages, I willingly admit that I had personal gripes with Nick Espinoza since shortly before, uh, after meeting him. I believe he has a good heart, but we have never agreed with his, uh, but have never agreed with his tactics. Uh, he has been granted access to this page up to this point, which has been nearly two years. If it were personal, he would have been removed far sooner. I haven't spoken with a single person who has said Occupy Homes is doing bad work or disagrees with their goals overall. It's just that we have collectively agreed that as a whole, Occupy Homes uh, ends don't necessarily justify the means. There are claims that these concerns concerning regarding Occupy Homes and Men have gone unheard until now. However, this is not the case. Nick and his organization have heard all the accusations before, but they have gone either unheard or ignored. It is no secret at this point that dissenters of their view are often blocked or deleted from their media pages. The Occupy movement starts a very clear goal of staying away from both leaders and special interests. I wouldn't even say there is evidence, but rather that it is common knowledge that Occupy Homes Minnesota and Occupy Men operate in two completely different ways regarding related but still separate issues. Finally, last paragraph, 
I also wish to stress that this separation of groups is not new. If it were, Occupy Homes and Occupy MN would not already have separate social media tools. We have been separate groups for some time. Just as with any other source of media, clear lines of division and voice will only help protect free speech. Thank you, Tony Boycourt. What are we going to do, y'all? <laughs> hey. Okay. Hands on you all. As far as I know, this kind of joint ownership thing has been tried over and over again. The, the, the consensus on the media team has been turnover, turnover, and it hasn't worked very well. It breaks up. Um, and I'm thinking if we do say for three weeks, we continue kind of like we're doing now, <coughs> the control there, up by homes posting stuff. I frankly like seeing some of the major stuff that Occupy Homes is doing on the website. It's, it's, it's colorful. I just love color. That's part of it. Um, but I don't see why we can't keep meeting, keep talking, large groups, small groups, whatever. Um, but uh, retain the control in the, in the media team that has a control and see how it works. Just try it out and see what are the feelings, what are the lives. If somebody decides they can make requests, you know, or sending things over, it might work better. Um, and again, it gives us some cooling off time. We just do something right now, temporary. And say it's not the final decision, it's a trial. We're trying out new relationships and a new process. Uh, and then keep doing this. Stack. Stack, yeah. Go back to Stack. And we'll need to figure out a, a closing time here. So it's uh, yeah, it's actually 25 to 9 right now. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Go ahead, Ben. So, uh, I, I just wanted to I remind people, at least this is how I understood things to have operated and, or to have formed on the plaza. And I don't. I think there are good reasons that they formed that way. I think there are problems with both ways they formed. Like ties in I'm sorry. If, if there's a proposal going yeah. forward, I think you can entertain it. All if right. it's more narrative about what happened in the past, I, I think they have to understand. Like, I think there's some confusion about how people, how groups are set up, and I'm trying to explain that so that we can understand how to move forward. If that makes sense? I don't think so. But go ahead. <laughs> okay. So basically, I'll, I'll try to make it quicker then. So there are there are problems with some of the ways our groups are formed, but the way that it was, <coughs> the beginning is you, for, you formed a committee based on any sort of thing, uh, food. Uh, finance, media, and the people in that committee made the decision. And it seems to me that the, the media here made a decision not the way they had originally planned and not according to their original process. I would propose that um, they try to do something to get as close to that process that as there was before, like maybe have some sort of sit down with Nick Espinosa as they would have if they were going to kick him off. But it's, it still does appear that it is what would happen. So, but I, I feel like that's what should happen. You have like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like the groups are going on that. It's a few different admins. It's not just one admin, it's a few different admins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We even had admins who just paid admins. You just walked in. What they were doing. Oh, it's one voice. Hold on. Who's next on stack? What's the stack? I got Beth, Dave, Beth, Lion, Tim, Ricardo, Patty, Mary Lynn, Becky, 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 Okay, we're talking on a turn. Let's have one voice, please. Uh, Ricardo, what do you recommend us do to move forward instead of like scattered everywhere, as everyone has again their own opinion, um, different proposals, all of this. Understandable, it's amazing, but also we need to literally get to a point. What are we going to do? What are we, you know, what is the media crew going to do for? Occupy homes to be on the website, not to be on the website, whatever. What is going to happen now will be an unsatisfactory solution. Okay? No matter what it is. Um, but we have to, decisions are made on the basis of power. 
the way things sit right now, power rests in the hands of the media committee. For whatever reasons, um, the Occupy Minnesota has set it up that way. It is an open question whether the media committee acted with integrity to its own process in doing this. So that is an unsettled question. There is mistrust and suspicion going both ways. But for now, there is no movement on that. So we will have to accept that the media committee will not allow anybody from Occupy Homes onto the media committee. I have asked if they will do the next best thing and guarantee that the flow of information is not blocked by them, either by their unavailability or their unwillingness to post it. This is not going to make homes happy necessarily, but it's the reality of power relations that we're dealing with. That leaves many unfinished agendas that not only can we not resolve them tonight, but we're not even in a good position because people are drained and because it's late, we're not even in a good position to really define what those next steps will be. So I think that that is going to have to fall to some number of people making a proposal and sending it out or bringing it to meetings. Um, I'm willing if the group would find it useful to remain in relationship around this because none of the immediate issues about access are going to ever be resolved and the deeper grievances unless, um, you know, well, unless the, the deeper issues are, are, are dealt with. Another question, do we keep going on with stack or do we make a resolution or maybe, I suggest him being a medium for group, the group of people that we suggested before. Like one minute? Time. One minute a person, maybe? What? One minute a person on stack, quick. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we okay. Temperature check a minute for everyone. Perfect. Um, right. Beth? Hey, I, I don't want to say because we're not an athlete, we're not an athlete and tie, but I think we got to think about when we're making these processes that we remember that, like, there's a lot of egos, attitudes, and ignorance. <coughs> and like when that decision was made, you know, I wasn't here, you weren't here, and some other people weren't here. So when somebody put out on Facebook, I know they were mean well, but they said it was made, the decision was made by all the people of Occupy Minnesota. And so I just want to say that's misrepresenting us. And so we got to think about that. Don't speak for everybody when you're not speaking for everybody. Time. <coughs> Dave? Okay, I think people have to work with the people they trust and closely. We're part of a movement of hopefully millions of people around the world, and yet we work in smaller groups and we cooperate among those groups. Right now there is a media committee that has done the work of the media, and I think they need to work with people who they trust and understand. I could see if there is, right now they're passing on information from Occupy Homes. I understand the emergency thing. If the call goes out, the police are there, and it you know, goes out to 23359 or whatever else like that. If there is somebody in Occupy Homes that the media committee would trust to have access to immediately post something like that, but only for that purpose, that way they could work with the people they trust, and then we can gradually bring this back together again and work cooperatively, but not necessarily all together. And that's the way the movement, I think, works best. Okay, Thank you. Um, Matthew? Whatever his name is. Sorry. I throw me out as that person. That person. Just go ahead. That's it. That's oh. what I'm saying. Okay. Um, Lion? I'd like to say first that Occupy Minneapolis slash Minnesota gave up our Wednesday night for the greater good of the greater Occupy movement in these parts. Next time, I do feel it should be Occupy Homes when I gather meet on Saturday. Second point, Occupy Homes Facebook. If Occupy Minnesota put a little thing, Occupy Homes has a Facebook too. You can reach them if you want. You to solve all the problems about that. Third thing, direct response to the person over there. We said, well, what about that media team statement in the past by consensus by this group? 
That's Wednesday night, as we've always operated, people who don't come to the meeting don't get included in that. And uh, fourth time, I'm getting tired as a former member of the Finance Committee by hearing about how the Finance Committee made decisions about how money is spent. That's so. job of the Finance Committee when I was on it was to keep track of the money in a bookkeeper sense Hi. and write the checks, take the deposits according to the will to the General Assembly. And that's all I got. Thank you. Okay. Um, Panda. As one of those homeless uh, drug addicts, I am, I am for one am very offended by the actions of Occupy Homes and their whole entire media staff. I, for one, would like to see them completely go their separate way. While I do believe that, um, that the Facebook page that is Occupy Minnesota should put a little tab off to the side saying, hey, Occupy Homes has their own little Facebook page, let's do this. But, you know, I'm completely disgusted with Occupy Homes, and I don't think I could ever say their name again. Okay, thank you. Um, Ricardo? Why are you? I can wait. I mean, I, I, I yeah. sure I'll have a uh, privilege when we're done with this tag. Okay. Um, Patty? Um, I think that, I think this is healthy. No matter how we all feel about it, it is healthy. But I do want to say this about Occupy Homes. I think it, I think it takes a lot of nerve for you to come here and hold people to a standard and accountability when you can't even be accountable to your own process as far as running your <coughs> own media. You're banning people. You're sitting there, coming here, wanting people to hold the media account accountable, but you're still doing the same shit you're accusing them of, okay? So until we can have you clean up your own act and do your own processes and have some ethics involved in what you do, I don't think you should be coming to the table anywhere asking anybody to do anything until you lead by example. Because you're not doing that. Patricia Time. Anyway. Thank you. Um, Mary? Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Well, um, I'm with uncomfortable with your comments. Okay. Some of the stuff that's been flying at Nick here. I'm a member of both Minneapolis and, and uh, Holmes and the Wealthy Human Village. I do want to say that the process by which this was presented to us last week much as I affirm this committee's abilities and so on, I felt it was, um, I didn't agree with it. I thought it was precipitous and I thought it was essentially unfair because those of us in Occupy Minneapolis who were at the meeting really didn't understand the ramifications of this happening and it was not presented it to us as a choice because there is no formal relationship between Occupy Minneapolis and the media group. The media group is an independent group of seven individuals that I understand who are either, some are participating, member, participating members of Occupy Minneapolis, some are not, but these are the people who are That's in okay. charge. We didn't understand that at the time. What we didn't know was the extreme dependency most of us uh, um, occupy homes upon uh, the uh, media site for its national campaigns and statewide. We didn't necessarily understand that. We know that now. Um, also, okay, may I just say one last thing? Yeah. Uh, we, we were completely unaware uh, when you were here of this relationship um, between you and Occupy Minneapolis. So what it boils down to is all the people of Occupy Home and all of the people of Occupy Minneapolis are now um, subject to the, to the desire of the seven people, um, some of whom we know, some of whom we don't know, and uh, you are going to tell us how it is. And so I guess what I'm hoping is that in, from the goodness of your hearts, uh, you might at least for the next three weeks uh, give us this opportunity to keep things as they were until we decide a way to go forward. I would ask you that, I would plead with you to do that, particularly with homeowners like Jane, Jamie here who need immediate help in their campaigns. Could you give us three more weeks while we figure this out? Okay, thanks, Ray. Um, I, need, I need to remind people we do have a time limit minutes mm -hmm. on each speaker, so please try to uh, respect that. Um, as soon as we're done with the stack, I'd like to collect. I'll wrap up. You know, uh, as far as the media team being like a separate entity, I don't really see that as being true. I think that there's a, a very close network of individuals that have gotten to know the people on the media team that have taken any trouble to do it. And time and again, I have come to the Occupy Minneapolis group and asked them to come out in support of the media team. And, and that means getting to know them, getting to understand what it means, being there to help support the media because we need the media. 
We don't have uh, mainstream media. We have this media. And actually, their independence from any one group is the strongest single position that they could possibly take as a group of media. And that, that we should respect that, that their, their independence and their ability to occupy uh, that space independently is, gives them uh, the ability, you know, to have that editorial process. And, uh, you know, that's my two cents uh, in 60 seconds. We need to have that. Thank you. Um, Becky? Yeah, um, Dave actually said a lot of what I was going to say about a possible short-term solution of restoring access to somebody at Occupy Homes. Clearly, Nick is not a good choice um, at this time, but to res restoring access temporarily with the understanding that it would be only for posting emergency eviction defense updates um, in the middle of the night as a short-term solution until we can figure out the rest of this stuff. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, April? Yeah, just to um, try to bring this back to where we're going, um, I think that we should, we can all just commit to having a media-focused meeting where we're at least maybe in the next week or so where we're actually going to talk about, because I know that what we're trying to talk about tonight has really, and I mean, obviously, everyone wants to discuss what's happening, but um, I mean, I'm not going to know some things in the next day or two, but if we can all commit as a media team to, you know, working together and, like, finding a meeting in, like, the next week sometime, just communicating over email, whatever we have to do, I think that that's something that we can commit to right now to work out these media focus issues. And that's really, and I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to make any other decisions about anything else tonight, but if we can at least say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, April. Um, is, um, yeah, I just want to echo off what um, April said that we should probably sit down and have a meeting, and I think that's good. We have been having a lot of back and forth over email with folks, and I think that, like, there, there are no bargaining chips on the table right now. Like, right now we just, like, there are lots of issues that have not been addressed that need to that our decision was based on, which include the editorial process of the two groups, who controls the Google groups access, and the censorship issues, and, um... I, I just don't think that I can trust anyone on Occupy Homes to have uh, access at this point. We're going to have to bring this to the I'm sorry. Okay. I was on set. I'm sorry. I was on set. Yeah, I, been I on have stack. a statement from Anita. She's in the live stream. Yeah, but that statement is apparently not, yeah. it has to do with the deeper issues, which we are not at present <laughs> in the position. I raised my hand. I raised my hand like yeah, an hour ago. Can we finish off stack? Can we finish off stack? Can we just finish off stack and then close it off? Yeah. I, thought, I thought that we had closed it. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, it was it closed for a while? Yeah, it's been closed. <laughs> I was on stack like an hour ago. Yeah, he's been on stack for a while. I've been on stack for a long time. Okay, tension, tension. Let's just go. You have a minute. All right, so first and foremost, um, I think I want to address the specific point about the process that this decision was reached. Um, yes, it wasn't exactly done in the most democratic form, but we also have to understand that a lot of the decisions, a lot of the, how Occupy Homes itself works is not democratic at all. Um, the reason why we didn't inform him, Nick Espinosa specifically about this, is because we knew that he wouldn't accept it. However, I think it's uh, very poignant for us to understand that this was something that was agreed upon by every other media committee member except for him. And there's a reason behind that. Yes, this is personal, but this is also ideological. I don't claim to speak for what Occupy Wall Street was about, but I do know what we came together to fight against. Censorship, authoritarianism, hierarchy, transparency, all the tools that the 1% <coughs> uses to, to quash opposition are the same tools that are being used by Occupy Homes to do the same thing. I wish that wasn't the, I wish that wasn't the way it was. But I think people need to understand that a serious breach of trust has been violated, yes, but this is also ideological. Well, I need to draw attention to the group, to a very uncomfortable fact. Um, I, well, I want to close by talking about just some brief points on which I've labeled here integrity, um, toxicity, and accountability. Um, one of the uncomfortable facts about integrity is that acting with integrity is never dependent on somebody else acting with integrity first. 
and when I am dealing with opponents who act without integrity, the way I fight that is to model integrity in context. There is no um, process that I consider to be the revolutionary standards that I try to live to that says, as long as other people are bending, breaking, making excuses, justifying, you know, treating people poorly, then I can do it. That doesn't mean they're not doing it. I'm not here to stand on one side or the other of this fence. But integrity is something that we use as a challenge to the people who are not behaving that way, not as something that we either practice or suspend, depending on other people's behavior. Second, toxicity. Simply, I would propose now, the issues that have not been dealt with, as, as you raised, um, the issues have not been dealt with, cannot be dealt with as long as the air is polluted with sectarian toxicity. Therefore, I would hope, I would ask, I would beg that tomorrow everybody doesn't go online to start spewing the, mo the vicious attacks and trying to put their spins to show how the other side sabotaged this process. Because, to use a phrase that I was taught by my mother, that's bullshit. <laughs> Can everybody say bullshit? Bullshit! The final point that I want to make is accountability. I just want to summarize what I think, where I think we are at. Um, and I just need the group to affirm this reality, if it is a reality. That as of now, we are talking about two things. First of all, an agreement from the media committee to be uh, basically a, a transparent channel for what Occupy Homes needs. Hopefully interpreting that generously. Obviously not for trivia, but hopefully not only for dire emergencies when cops are breaking down doors. This is a temporary measure. Um, we're talking about taking steps that hopefully will have some significance by the end of the three-week process. And the next, then the final piece is how do we spur that process on? I am not in leadership of any either of these groups. I am not, it's not my responsibility and it's not within my capacity to organize a committee or decide who should be on it. I'm willing to help whoever is come forward and whoever you all agree on. So that's all for you guys to figure out how that's going to happen. But I am available to assist with that process. I think I would like to su suggest, first of all, here if I'm reading this correctly, and if so, um, recommend that we close the meeting. Um, on that note, I also think we should close the meeting, but at our media committee meeting, would you come and facilitate that discussion? Oh, is that just within the media committee? I think everyone in the media committee and Nick should be there. I'm not By the way, the media stuff is open if you want to come down and join the media team. Yeah. Um, Possibly. What I would ask is that <laughs> you contact me okay. Off, okay. offline because I need to figure out you know, my, my, my overcommitment. commitment. <laughs> 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 me too. I know. <laughs> but if I can help, I'll certainly show Thank you. Okay. Bring the meeting to a close. Um, I would like to, this is a very strange word to use in this context, but congratulate you on a very difficult process. It might not be easy. I'm proud to know y'all. Thank you to Kumpton. Can you contact me on the way to take time tomorrow? Yeah. I work tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I gotta work for Yeah, yeah. All right. What's that? Uh, yeah, well, and then I need to have all these statements, man. Like, shit. Okay. Hey, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. And you can obviously, um. Yes, the day of breaking song. Yes. Here's the day of breaking the new uh, the newly ordained benevolent emperor. Okay, so um, I just wanted to read in like Anita sent this to me with the intention of um sorry, so um it's too loud. Yes, yes. Okay. So um 
I was trying to read what Anita sent me. Okay, so I hope this audio is okay. Um, it seems really blown. Um, okay. Alright, so I will, so this is what Anita Way has sent to me with the intention of having you go to the meeting. Um, I was called a dictator by Anthony when I didn't agree. I was blatantly lied to. After I said I wasn't okay with how articles were were written, um, after I said I wasn't okay with how articles were written, um, sorry, I was told I could write, they would look it over, and before changes run it by me first, but they didn't, they made changes, they edited out my mentioning others involved in the campaign amongst other things, and made it sound like it was all about them. I say give credit where credit is due. Um, Anthony had me shunned. I was told at a meeting that with the bank's president. Thank you. Uh, I think that this Wednesday night meeting group decided next week because this event was happening to have it there. Am I wrong about that? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'm right. So if anyone wants a flyer to know where to go next Wednesday, I've got some. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect, Malia. That's true. The Wednesday night meeting is not happening here next Wednesday. Uh, I'm sorry, Anita. Um, okay, so back to this. So Anita Reyes sent to me, Anthony had me shown that I was told in a meeting that the bank's president had to be at a certain time because people from the convention would be there. Yet later I was told no announcement was made at the convention. What I'm trying to say is that they are sacrificing the homeowner at the expense of their ego, publicity, and greed. Think of just how much the two financial reports stating stipends over 20 Stipends over $24,000. Um, so we're saying we now want to come back here and continue this process until April 10th. What? Well, not, there's no meeting here until the 10th. There's no meeting here until the 10th. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
know. I know you're going to end the streams here soon. In a few minutes. Uh, I'm not here, but you can talk. Yeah, yeah but um, um, like, with your permission, I'd like to, uh, yeah, I, it's like whatever you want to say, buddy. Uh, um, is that, that I'm probably going to just head straight home and then, then hop on and, and continue this discussion for people who want to. Um, for example, on, your, on your new stream? I, I'll, I'll do it on my, on my live stream on the T-shirt Toby. Uh, live, Livestream.com slash T-shirt Toby? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'd make you out. I didn't make it come talk to Yeah, I, it's from my house. I'm not going to do it on this channel, you know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> cool. uh, now welcome to the conversation. If, um, if any of you guys want to... Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I I have work I got to do tonight. But um, okay. if you're still just, online in like two hours after eleven o'clock, then I can like make a lot of noise in my apartment, blabbing. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, we'll try to work. But you know, yeah, I mean, because there are legitimate questions, and I know, like, I've been involved in the history stuff. So yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know the players. Yeah, what's up? I can still get um, the inbox. What? Yeah. Yeah, Ziggy can still uh, Ziggy can still be messaged on Facebook, but his uh, main you know uh, main account is censored. Hey, hey, are you, you watching one of my favorite? Oh yeah, hello, guys. Okay, dude. Yeah. Uh, thanks for posting. So, uh, all right, guys. Uh, well, um, yeah, so do you want me to write it? I can write it down. It's, it's just okay. Twitter.com T-shirt Toby. Yeah. Okay. I'm my name's Toby. I wear a T-shirt. Yeah, and you show up to so many things. Like in your own way, you're always filming. You know? <laughs> like, so, I do filming today. Oh my god. Yeah, you know, but you're like one of those people that just can't be stopped from filming no matter the situation. Yeah. Where's that, Bob? Hi. Hey, Bob. Did you can make it down? Yeah. I was glad to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, We're still live for like another minute here, but you can say hi to the live. Hi, everybody. All right, so I'm heading. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know too much about what's going on. I'm very interested in the life of my home. Yeah. You know, I'd like to you know, figure out a way to keep it. Well, I mean, you know, it's just a, a, a you know, a, a change in an editorial process in two social media accounts, but it, but it related to such a larger set of issues that it just wound up a lot of energy, you know, I think that's the, yeah, you know, exactly, like the dialectic has to move forward, um, so, uh, but the other thing too, like, you know, you're a press guy, and like, you believe in speaking out in your own, you know, voice. I mean, and uh, and frankly, the censorship has been some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen. It's like uh, it, it's been very difficult for me to watch that. I've been involved in the media stuff to try to get you know more viewpoints out, and uh, it, it's been tough to see people's voices new. You know what I mean? So that's made, it's been a big deal. Okay, and I think we're probably going to be having them like. Probably like every other Wednesday before these meetings, like it can be like five o'clock. And frankly, like I don't want it to be. I, I personally don't want it to be like haggling and stuff. So rather workshopping stories, you know. But we can't have like a joint decision making process with. I just assume this. Yeah, totally. Well, we, it'll be they'll be announced, and it, it could be probably not next week, but I will get the week after. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to see you, Bob. Take care. Anyway. Um, so that was uh, Bob Carney and Ziggy. Uh, Clive Bart says Ziggy and Bob Carney will do an economy routine. Yeah. Who's that? Dave Viking is not the uh, emperor. Or emperor. He's the emperor, yes. That's true. He's the galactic emperor. Yes. All right. Well, he's the emperor. Yeah. So folks are heading out. Um, I think overall it was productive. Also, there was turkey dinner. The food was amazing. Um, anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll let the, la the live stream go for there. Thank you all for uh, tuning in, and um, yeah. Good night.